Well, I hope all the Wolves fans down at the Hawthorns today had a really good day because I certainly did and I wasn't even there. Uh, yeah, very jealous of you all. What a day. What a result. Something we've been waiting for for such a long time. And this squad just gets it, don't they? Gary O'Neill gets it. Squads pass with Nuno. That, those two league games under Nuno. They just... I don't think they've understood the magnitude of the game and the magnitude of the fixture. One thing's for sure is this squad does and Gary O'Neill does. And it makes me so proud to see a performance like that. It wasn't it wasn't electric by our standards. It was nowhere near what we're capable of as a team, as we've seen this season. But what it was, it was hearty, it was resilient, it was determined. That all of them were determined to win and I think there were some standout performers in a team that wasn't, you know, it, was, it wasn't a tremendous performance. So, quick shout out. Uh, Tommy Doyle understood it. First one to come to the fans after the game. Just English kid from Manchester, but knows about the importance of Derby days. And I'm chuffed. And if we don't sign in for five million, <sighs> there's something wrong in there. Max Kilman, best player on the pitch today. Best player on the pitch. We we I think Albion looked good in key phases of the game. First 15 minutes, I thought they were decent. Max Kilman snubbed it all. I think it was a proper captain's performance. Kept his head really, really intelligent with the way he dealt with certain situations. I know people can call him quiet and people kind of says he takes a back seat, which he often does. But I think had he lost his head in certain situations today, it's not what you want to see from a captain, especially in these type sort of games. So I thought he was excellent defensively and with his mindset as well. But yeah, this is just something to top off a year. You know, it's a, a great start to the year, but it's already made my year. So absolutely chuffed with it. Absolutely chuffed with it. West Brom weren't at their best. I don't think they were that great. But neither were we, but it just showed the golfing class between Premier League teams and Championship teams. And that's unfortunately what those bastards are. So, uh, yeah, unlucky for them. I certainly loved it. And I hope uh, all Wolves fans at the Hawthorns today got home safely. All things considered, with the, with the whole commotion during the game. I'll just address that quickly. I quite like it. I quite like it. I've got no problem with it. I think... The ITV were making a huge deal out of it, like it was World War Three. It was embarrassing. Um, this is proper British football derby days. We've it's it's been missing for years. Derby days have been saturated with tourist fans and a lack of proper passion and tribalism. And I think today was a real taste of the past, and I loved it. So yeah, on to Manchester United on my birthday. So uh, I'll see you all after that. Well, let's be honest. Only one thing mattered today, and that was a result. And the boys went out there and got the job done. 2 0 win into the next round. Brighton at home, not the best draw, but not the worst either. And, and it's at least it's another home game. So, you know, that, that we've got good form at home at the moment. So fingers crossed for the next round. But as I say, today really the result was, was all that mattered. And ultimately it was two bits of quality really that won it for us. Um excellent reading of the corner from Doherty for the first goal. Um saw the danger, cut it out. And then really just had to roll it through for Neto, who did just what he does, you know, back to his best following his injury. Overran it slightly, I thought, but the ball still stuck to his foot and he stuck it away well to make it 1-0. Um, after that, I think workmanlike was probably the best way to describe that performance today. Defended well at times, not so well at others. Gave the ball away a bit too easily at, at different points today. But then again, another bit of quality, Kuna on the break. Um, gets in behind and makes it 2-0. And I actually thought after the game restarted again, he was going to do exactly the same thing again to make it three. But good save from the keeper uh, to keep it at 2-0. But as I say, the result that's all that matters today, really the quality shuns through in the end. You know, Kuna and, and Neto, two very, very good players. And we're seeing them, I think, at the at the peak of their powers at the moment. Bellegarde, a disappointment again today. I don't blame him, really. Um, but playing through the middle is absolutely not his strong point. He's not a centre forward. Um, doesn't sound like we're going to get one in this transfer window either, which is disappointing having already let Kalajic and uh, Silva go out on loan, which I know neither of them were playing and neither of them are really the answer and perhaps don't fit into our system. But when you've got no alternative, um, it seemed a bit of a silly move. Thought Fraser was unlucky not to come on today as well. But as I say, all, all in all, just a, a really... Solid performance, I think is probably the best way of describing it. Um, as I say, all that matters is getting that 2-0 that win. Um, crowd trouble was just moronic, let's be honest. Um, I'm almost loath to, to really talk about it, but 
West Brom fans just deciding to fight the police for no reason, no apparent reason whatsoever. Um, here in reports, there might have been one Wolves fan or a couple of Wolves fans in the West Brom end, you know, opposite where we were. But again, even if there's a couple there, Stewards seem to have dragged them out fairly quickly. And what followed was just nonsense, really. Um, it's quite funny on the radio on the way home, listening to a, a guy having a treatment for head injuries, which he probably wouldn't have got if he didn't try and fight the police and the stewards and, and end up getting absolutely battered. So, uh, yeah, it, it, it is what it is. Um, tension's obviously boiling over and they're obviously not happy at going 2-0 down. But at the end of the day, we're, we're the better team, Premier League team, and, and showed our quality when it really counted today and got the win, which, uh, yeah, is, is all that matters, really, and a, and a great result. So into the next round, um, only two wins off another trip to Wembley now, which would be brilliant. Um, you know, I think we're, we've got some unfinished business at Wembley in the FA Cup. So hopefully get the result against Brighton in the next round and then see where we go from there. So West Brom nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers two. Let's say that again. West Brom nil, Wolves two. What a day, what a win, what a time to be alive. Gary O'Neill, you have truly, absolutely won me over in this last month because it has been an unbelievable half a season by Wolves, a little over half a season. Make absolutely no mistake about it. Nobody in their wildest dreams could have thought when Lopetegui walked out like a big coward three days before the start of the season. The Wolves would be in the fifth round of the FA Cup, have made mugs of that lot, and basically cause them to embarrass themselves in front of everyone on national television as well. Beating them, be 10th or 11th in the Premier League, be three points off Europe, I and all without playing a proper striker. You just, I really can't believe how good things are at Wolverhampton Wanderers at the minute. And that is all testament to that man. So just give him everything, give him the credit that he deserves because what... What a job he's done so far. I can't speak highly enough of him. And here's hoping he can push on and we can push on against Brighton in the fifth round. It's not a great tie, but it's not terrible. We can beat them. It's at home as well. So hopefully we'll be able to do them. But today, wow, what a day. What a win for Wolves. Performance-wise, wasn't the greatest, but I don't think anyone, anyone cares about that from a Wolves point of view. The first half, I think we had to weather a little early storm, but then after that, I thought we controlled what was a pretty poor game. Tommy Doyle, I thought, was excellent in the middle of the park, kept things ticking over his passes. He was one that I wasn't too sure about when we signed, but my God, I'm so glad he's proven me wrong because I think he's a really good player. He's, he, you know, when you can tell the difference between a midfielder that just gets it and passes it, Doyle's actually incisive with his passing. And he's a real handful for many teams to pick up now because he's played a lot recently for Wolves. And I don't think by any means Jao Gomez slots straight back into that midfield. Like, he probably will. But Doyle is certainly knocking on the door to be a permanent starter in this team now. Neto, what a guy. First time he took them on in the first half, down the side. And then their, sorry, their fans sarcastically, ironically cheering just as his shot uh, well, just before he took the shot when the ball bobbled away from him and then he steered it into the bottom corner sparking incredible scenes in the OA and, and I'm sure everywhere in pubs all over Wolverhampton and houses as well um, what a great day what a great win the crowd trouble was embarrassing on their behalf I'm not going to go too much into it but like come on now uh, just a bit salty after Cunha tucked away the second and what a player he is Mateus Cunha I absolutely love him to bits he's everything that Wolverhampton Wanderers should be he's a new Nevers and hopefully he can for the fans like he can stay for a while because now that price tag that people were saying last season oh, why have we paid this much for him it is genuinely looking like a steal at this moment in time and I don't think that's an overreaction to say and the first and only player we've spent big money on since Scott Sellers left the club has there hasn't been an absolute disaster like the Guedes and Nunes and Catrone and the Fabio Silva and the likes, but he looks like finally we've spent big money on a player, and we've we're good. We're getting our money's worth out of him. Uh, another word, Craig Dawson today. I thought uh, like tough for him, obviously, because he used to play for West Brom. But I thought he was excellent today. Totti was with it, apart from getting done by Jeb Wallace maybe once or twice. Nelson solid. Max Kilman excellent as well. All the back five really good. Lamina very solid in the middle. Um, Todd Bellegarde struggled a little bit to get into the game but Cunha Neto especially two goals you can't really ask for much more from them 
Um, I know he did his bit when he came on as well, but I actually thought Matt Doherty was decent today. He did very well in the breakaway for the corner to set up Neto for the opening goal. And um, I don't think we've been too bad in him. Deput He's been too bad deputising for Ryan Aitnori, who I'm glad he's back now, though. Um, but no, certainly Doherty, uh, by no means, he gets some ridiculous abuse online from Wolves fans. Um, in my opinion, he's not a bad player at all. He's a very good one to have in and around the squad. But what a day. We never thought this day would come. But finally, we've put that laid that hoodoo to rest, really. Not winning at that place for so long. But it's just so good to have it done. Gary O'Neill, what a man, what a hero. I don't think anyone would have thought Wolves would be in such a good position this season at this moment in time. There was so much fear the stuff could go wrong today, but really West Brom are just shit. Like, not a whole lot threatened us at all. We were never in any massive danger. And even after they made shows of themselves in the crowd, we still came out on top and nearly added a third to Cunha as well. But I thought we controlled the game. I thought we were excellent. In grinding out the result, defence was class. Attack took their chances when we needed to. On to Man United at home now. Hopefully that can be a really good atmosphere under the lights. But I said it twice and I'll say it a third time. West Brom nil, Wolverhampton Wanderers 2 into the fifth round of the FA Cup. Wolves a we Just got back from the game. Unbelievable. Unbelievable day out. Absolutely perfect. Couldn't have written it any better, to be honest with you. Um, Albion fans embarrassing themselves late on in the game, scrapping with police. Um, just a brilliant performance, even though it's obviously a really tough place to, to come for us because it was their cup final. We didn't quite get into it in the beginning. Um, and I thought they were the better team actually in spells, but it's that that cutthroat um, finishing from Neto, who's a magic, magic player. Um, and I hate when we play on TV and he does something magical because he's just making the whole world know what a brilliant little talent he is. And I don't expect him to be at the club much longer. Um, but Cunha is a fantastic signing as well. There was parts of me back end of last season where I thought 40 million for what? What have we bought? Again, just adding to his game so many different parts um, in the last year or so. And he's been brilliant. So... Those two players obviously stand out with the goals, but I thought Kilman uh, and Tommy Doyle today were probably our best players on the pitch. Tommy Doyle kept it cook it, um, cooking and, and, and ticking um, throughout the entire game, really very composed on the ball. Um, and I thought Kilman dealt with everything perfectly today as well. Kept him fantastic. So it's a brilliant performance. Album fans um, kind of embarrass themselves a little bit with the, with the police trouble few bands coming their way I think um, but I just wish they would have sat down quicker and, and so that we could get on with the game there's no need for us to be sat here for half an hour waiting for you to sit down because nothing's happening you've got about 40 police in front of you just go and sit down it's embarrassing um, yeah I'm glad the game got to, got to the end in its entirety and I'm glad we got those celebration scenes at the end with Gary O'Neill giving it the, uh, the old Nuno so it was a brilliant day um and I know that tickets before this, some people were offering 250, 300 quid for them. That was priceless. Serious, serious, brilliant memory. That is, you, you can't put a price on that. Um, and God knows when this match will happen again, because they don't look like coming up anytime soon either. Hopefully we've got a cup run coming up. I know we've got Brighton now at home. I'm glad we've got a home draw, but I'm sick of playing teams like Brighton and Brentford. It feels like we play them every week. Um, but maybe if we keep building some momentum, especially over this tough period, I know our fixtures are quite hard. Then they, who knows? Gary O'Neill, we could end up back at Wembley again and uh, right those wrongs of the past. We haven't got any 10 docker anymore, so I can see last minute penalties, anyways. But it's a brilliant day. Um, on to next Thursday. It's finished. Uh, Wolves 2, um, West Bromwich Albion 0. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. Uh, not a very good performance in what uh, I'm sure Gary O'Neill and the lads wanted to do today, um, but a good. Uh, massive, massive win against uh, one of the worst teams in the championship um, with one of the weirdest fan bases in the championship as well. Um, we that they, they did uh, a good job on us fir first off, um, not really giving us much, um, but I don't think SARS really had many saves to make in the game uh, and we've managed to 
scored two really really good goals on the on the break. Um, so yeah, we 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 move that into the into the next round of the cup. Um, that's all I'm going to say on it today. Nice short and sweet for me. Next round of the cup, Man United Thursday night. Um, is Gary O'Neill taking us somewhere? That is the question that we are asking on the way home. Um, so enjoy your evening, Wanderers fans, uh, and move on to Man United on Thursday. Cheers. So guys, so it's finished Wolves to West Brom, Neil. Um, I've, it, it took me till now, really, to calm down, to be fair. Um, I was six years old the last time Wolves won at the at the Hawthorne. So watching that today, uh, after seeing us you know, on TV during COVID and, and seeing us lose so convincingly and then getting a crappy draw the last time and everything. And just, I mean, that led to Nuno leaving, didn't it? And I just think that today was like a complete transition be be between those periods for me. Like, we're in a really good way now with Gary O'Neill and, like, he took it for granted today, you know, it, it, looked, it just looked easy for him in a way and it could have looked really really difficult but he just he just like took it as a as a normal game he didn't get like emotional over it or whatever and, and you can see the emotion come out of him at the end but throughout really I think he, he kept the, the, the team really like level headed and I think I've said this before but I think that's what we really like about Gary O'Neill because we've had really emotional managers in the past you know that it's it's good in a way, but when it sometimes you don't need that. Sometimes you need someone with a with a calm head and a and a calm persona, and I think that's what Gary O'Neill gives us. And ultimately, I think that's the difference between us, you know, playing West Brom the last time we played him with Nuno, and yeah, under circumstances, it was it was it was hard for the players, and it was hard for Nuno, especially you know not being able to see his family and that, but. I don't know, just today, like even even though I don't particularly think we played that well, I don't. I feel, I feel like, um, I feel like we never really got out first gear. To be fair, um, we 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 arguably should have woke up a little bit sooner than we did, really. And before the goal, I, I thought that it was a very equal sort of contest. But I do think West Brom like dealt with the ball better and. Yeah, I, I, I just don't know. I think like the players are, seemed a little bit nervous, and then as soon as we scored that goal, it just seemed like the we took our foot off the brake and we just went into cruise control. And it, from there, really, you're going into half time and you're thinking, right, you know, they're going to come out and we're just going to defend and hit him on the counter, and that's pretty much what happened, really. Like I feel like, and that that really played into our game. Like at the start, I feel like because we were trying to beat their low block and they were trying to beat our low block it was very much um, a very cagey contest and a little bit poor really uh, for both teams but you know the second half um, they came at us and threw everything with the kitchen sink at us and really we, we just held very firm and, and, and just showed what kind of resilient team we are now under Gary O'Neill like Wolves of old would have let him two there today and, and that would have been it you know that would have been Two one to them and and there we go again like history repeats. But today it just felt like it never was going to happen. Like I'm watching Wolves versus West Brom and I'm I'm pretty chill in that second half and I'm like how 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 is it come to this? Because start of the season if you're telling me we're playing West Brom mate, I'm telling you we're getting tanked at Hawthorns again. And I don't know about you guys that watch the videos and whatever, but. In my job, I see West Brom fans all the while, and they're always like this in my ears about them beating us 5-1 five, five back in the day, beating us during COVID, you know. My man of the match is probably Tommy Doyle, but I do think we were kept in the game through those transitions, through through Toti today. For Toti Gomez, without him on those transitions sometimes... With how our midfield was, them having a three and us having a two, we were a little bit open, and I liked how he just went, "Nah, you ain't getting through. You ain't gonna be that easy." And Tony Gomez did that really well for me today. Um, so, it, but uh, it's got to be Cunha, isn't it? He gets the he gets the end goal, 
he could have arguably had a third. But yeah, after the second goal winning, guys, I know this is going to be long, but I can't believe we've won Albion. It's got to be long, isn't it? Um, after that second goal winning, it all just went off, didn't it? It just absolutely went off. Um, it's a weird one, really, because you're watching it on telly, you're thinking, oh, God, I hope everyone's all right. But in the back of your mind, you're going, it's a derby. It should be like that. It should be, you know, nasty. It should, it should have stupid things like that in it, but... Not to the extent, I think, like, if it's handbags, it's all right. But when people are bleeding and that, it's just going too far, isn't it? Um, but I did, I did, it did make me, like, it's, it's, it's going to be really awkward for me to say this, but it made me a bit proud, to be fair, that there was that sort of commotion in a, in a derby because you watch other derbies and it's them hugging one another and and the, and the, and the crowd, are like, the, like the Spurs are against Arsenal and everything, it, just, it, ain't, it ain't a derby, is it? That today was a derby, you know. What game gets postponed because of, you know, because of trouble? Not a lot. And and some of the fouls that were going in as well, like you were applauding them because they're against the opposition that you've you've grown to hate. And there's so many games that don't do that anymore. There's so many. I can name so many derbies I've watched this season that have just been like, yeah. All right, like, is it a derby, though? Do they really care? And you can say what you want about the Albion. The Albion fans today were really loud, and so were the Wolves fans, and it just goes to show it ain't all about money and having the best players and everything. It, it, it's about you as a team, and and it makes you proud to be from the black country, doesn't it? Because, you know, they're the kind of, they're the kind of games that really show you just how amazing this derby really is and today just uh, it was just it was just the, the perfect derby in a way you know it was it was it was the perfect derby we made him look crap and you know we also had a bit of that didn't we? we had a bit of a uh, a bit of that that we'll look back on and and there'll be like songs and pictures and videos of, of this you know when do you remember that when you know the birmingham end went absolutely mental and it was Wolves fans that bought Albion tickets and all this. It's stories like that that, that live on, man. Like, we haven't had many times like that, and and that's just awesome for me. I just, I, I hope everyone's all right. I truly do. But it, it, for me, it just made the game even even crazier, to be fair. Um, but, yeah, guys, thank you very much for watching. I uh, hope everyone's good in that. Um, we're against Man United um, at home, and... We just drawn Brighton at home as well, and at the moment, like I'm, I'm not worried about any team really. I'm not, especially at Molyneux. I'm not, I'm not worried about any team, and that's a really good, really good way of, uh, of looking at it now. And yeah, sorry it's a long one day. I know you don't want a long video, but um, it's going to be a hard one to do, not do a long video when it's a game of this magnitude. So uh, appreciate you guys having me on again, and uh, see you later.